welcome students under unit 4 integral calculus we are starting with the introduction to this unit so let's get on to the presentation so before starting the presentation let's have the overview so we are having the introduction and then we're going to discuss few applications about integration and the different types of integrals followed by discussion the word calculus comes from Latin meaning small stone, which relates in understanding the concepts by looking at small pieces. So one should know the difference between differential calculus and integral calculus. Differential calculus cuts something into smaller pieces to find how it changes. In fact, differentiation is rate of change. Whereas integral calculus joins or integrates the small pieces together to find how much there is. So we can say integration is the inverse process of differentiation. We find the primitive of the derivative and such process is called anti-differentiation or integration. The integral of a function is an extension of the concept of a sum. The process of finding integrals is called integration. This process is usually used to find the measure of totality such as area, volume, mass, displacement, etc. So the concept of sum. So you just keep summing it up. Finally, it is results in the integration of that particular region. So now the basic concept between differentiation and integration was first started by the fundamental theorems. There are two fundamental theorems. So fundamental theorem of calculus plays a very major role in calculus studies. It connects differential calculus and integral calculus. So let's see the applications where the integrations are applied. In business today, we use several applications and they require them to be integrated so that the business processes as a whole to perform seamlessly. We need everything to be integrated. And under automation, an easy to use interface, drag and drop capability and intelligent integration technology offers quick and reliable integration. So you could see that in any office, we see the automation and then just everything is connected, everything is integrated to a particular system. Now let's move on to the different types of integrals. Few to mention. Indefinite integrals. We say that an integral is indefinite when we don't have any limits on it. Definite integrals, which means there are limits on the integrals. We have an upper limit as well as a lower limit. And how do I substitute? I integrate the function and then I substitute the upper limit subtracted from the lower limit. Now third category will be improper integrals. So what are improper integrals? Improper integral is also a definite integral that has either or both limits infinite or an integral that approaches infinity. In a simpler format, you can take any definite integrals and you can make this a or b or both as infinity. So minus infinity to plus infinity or any one may be infinity. So or there is another answer. When you integrate that also, it will approach infinity. So in that category, either of these three cases, if it happens, it will be called as improper integrals. Now next comes double integral. Double integral will be evaluated over two times over the two-dimensional function f of x comma y over dx dy or dy dx. And suppose if you are going to find the area, we use double integral under the region. That particular region, what is mentioned, we mention it as r. From there, from the region, we find the limits and we substitute these limits in the integral and then we evaluate and hence we get the area of that particular region and next comes triple integrals so triple integrals will be having 
totally six limits. So the order of integration can be followed as either dz dy dx or dx dy dz. Then dx should be in front. Any order you can follow for your triple integration. So we have the limits. And here triple integral are especially used to evaluate the volumes of solids. Which means we get the dimensions of the solids and we start substituting these dimensions in the, particular lim in the limits of the integral. And when we evaluate we get the volume of the particular solid. For instance, you can find the volume of a sphere or we can find the volume of an ellipsoid. So, so much of things are applied under volume integration. And next, let's see the variation between definite integrals and indefinite integrals. So what are definite integrals used for? A just small recap, definite integrals are integrals which has the lower limit as well as your upper limit in your integral. It is used to find the area under the curve of a function, the area between two curves, the volume of solid of revolution. So here volume in the sense we use triple integral. So we find the limits of the triple integral and we substitute and we find the volume of that particular solid. Whereas indefinite integrals, the antiderivatives or integrals of the function are not unique. Actually, there exists infinitely many antiderivatives of each of these functions which can be obtained by choosing C arbitrarily from the set of real numbers. C is referred as an arbitrary constant. So many of the students may be thinking why do we write plus C and plus C always whenever we integrate. We use plus C only when we are integrating using indefinite intervals because there are a lot of functions which are not unique. So if we start varying the values of the C arbitrarily, so automatically we get infinite number of solutions for in indefinite intervals. Next, the integral would be return of A to B. This is a definite integral f of x dx. So let me explain what are the concepts why are we using this the symbols notation so this elongated s is called the integral symbol which is represents the integration and what are this a and b called a and b are called the end points of the interval so where is the area starting and where is the area ending f of x the function which has been substituted inside your integration b are integrate known as called as the integrant dx is the notation for the variable of integration. So suppose we use a function of x and we are going to integrate with respect to dx and we are going to integrate with respect to y then the function will be fy. So this is how an area is evaluated over uh, below the curve y is equal to f of x. Now let's discuss the superimposing of the two graphs where we have two graphs here f of x and g of x which are intersecting along with each other. So how are we going to find the area of this? So first integral a to b f of x dx minus integral a to b g of x dx is equal to integral over a to b f of x minus g of x. So find the individual area and then subtract it and you get your intersected area. Next area including two regions. Suppose if a student say I have multiple regions here. So only from A to B should I, can, uh, should I calculate. How can I calculate for the rest of the areas. The area can be divided like different types of regions. Region 1 and region 2. So if I need the area for the particular entire region. I can calculate region 1 added with region 2 along with region 3 if I need it. So area including two regions. We just combine two graphs, the area bounded under f of x. There is a single curve, but there is a division in between this particular region. So we name, we, we just write on the limits as a, c and b. So how am I concluding? Integral a to b f of x dx is equal to the entire area from a to b will be equal to the sum of integral over a to c plus the integral sum of c to b. So hence I will be arriving at my total area adding up the two regions which is integral a to b f of x dx. 
So I hope you understood the video, the introduction video of integral calculus. We will continue in the next lecture. Thank you.